Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carol and I'm a life coach from carolcares.com who helps all teens and young adults work through their mental health challenges. Thanks for being here with me because I really care about what you're working through. If you're thinking about self-harming right now, please hit the help button. Have you ever had this intense emotional reaction to something or someone all of a sudden and you had no idea where it came from? And it feels like you're actually exaggerating or overreacting to what just happened. Well, you've probably just been triggered. In this video, I wanna talk about what a trigger is and why we get triggered. So let's jump right into it. You can get triggered by just about anything or anybody. You can be watching a movie and all of a sudden on the screen there's this noise or an action causes you to panic. Or you see someone and for some reason you just can't be around them. Or maybe you read a text from somebody and suddenly you burst into tears. Even certain smells or sounds or places can trigger us. Now I came from a very traumatic childhood, so many of my emotional reactions to my triggers could be very intense. I'm gonna tell you about one really emotional and personal trigger that I had just a few years ago. I was in Germany in an older hotel, and the keys that they gave us were these large keys on a keychain. The keychain was actually the number of my room, and my number was 321. When I was given the key, I didn't even think anything about it. One evening I was sitting around with a group of adults and I had my key in my hand. I was staring down at my key and I looked at the number 321 and all of a sudden I lost it. I panicked. I had to run into the bathroom. I started to cry and someone had to come in the bathroom and console me. And it ended up that I just couldn't stay there that evening and I had to go up to my own room. And I didn't make sense of it at the time, but I came to realize that 321 was the address of a house that I lived in when I was a child. I lived at 321 St. Clair. And that was the house that some of my sexual abuse memories came from. So I was being triggered and it didn't take me long to figure it out. So in the past when I did get triggered, I suddenly became off balance, very distracted. And like that incident that I just talked about, I could no longer concentrate on what I was doing. My mind would start racing. My heart would beat really fast and it couldn't stop. I couldn't get the thoughts out of my head, no matter how hard I tried. It was like this story kept replaying in my head over and over and over again so I could be completely safe somewhere and all of a sudden something would trigger me and it would feel like it's all happening at that moment but I was having this intense reaction to it and you know I'm sure you're familiar with your triggers and what happened with me is I would become anxious or panicky or petrified sometimes angry and it's like I had no control over what was happening and if I was able to step back from the incident and look at what just happened, I realized that I completely overreacted to what just happened. So if you take the incident with the keychain, I completely overreacted to seeing the number 321. It was so weird and yet it seemed so real, like it was happening during that moment. I'm just wondering if you can relate to this. So what's actually going on when we get triggered? Because it can be a really scary thing. Our reactions can be so strong that we can feel totally out of control. When something triggers you, your mind for some reason, and you may not even know it at the time, believes that this trigger is dangerous. So it sends a message to your body to protect you from this danger. Your body actually has this built-in natural reaction to danger. So it's called the fight, flight, 
or freeze response. There are three common responses that can come up when something or someone triggers you. Think about reactions that you've had when you have become triggered. Did you ever get angry all of a sudden because of what somebody said to you? That's the fright response. Did you ever feel like you had to run or just get out of a room as fast as you can? That's the flight response. Did something or someone make you so scared that you actually froze and couldn't move? That's the freeze response. I'm sure that you know your triggers by now. I know I do. Uh, everyone gets triggered, and, but we all get triggered differently. But there is one thing that we all have in common and when it comes to triggering, we become totally off balance. By that I mean, your triggers may bring up your anxiety, uh, a panic attack, crying, anger, usually very strong emotions. And sometimes your reaction can seem so big to something that was so small. And you may even get accused of being dramatic or exaggerating because your reaction seems just too intense for what is really happening. Well, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that your triggers are real. <laughs> They're very real. I know that some of you may try to ignore your triggers. Maybe people have told you to ignore them, you know, get over them, uh, just ignore them, they'll go away. But I'm here to tell you that every single one of your triggers are real. It took me a while to accept that and to believe that they were, but I finally had to because I realized they were part of my story. We all get triggered for different reasons. So what triggers you may not trigger someone else. You may be petrified when you see a spider and someone else doesn't get scared at all. Uh, when I was a teacher, there were students who were in my class and they're absolutely petrified to do an oral presentation in front of the class. And then there are other students who loved getting up in front of the class. So getting up in front of the class was a real trigger for some students, but not others. So why? Um, why do we have triggers? There has to be a reason why. Triggers will show up, whether you like it or not. It's just part of being human. And if you avoid them, they will keep showing up louder and stronger than before. And I'm sure you've tried everything to avoid them. Uh, and maybe some of you have certain things in place to try to avoid them. Uh, maybe you just don't go near certain people or you don't go to certain places or you numb out because you can't stop your mind from spinning about this trigger. And there can be all sorts of ways to numb out so we don't get triggered as much. But the reality is this, trying to avoid your triggers doesn't work. It's impossible. And you've probably figured this out already by now. If you try to avoid your triggers, they'll keep coming up. You'll keep getting triggered for the exact same thing over and over and over again until you realize one thing. Are you ready for this? All triggers are teaching moments. Now I know that some of you are saying, what are you talking about teaching moments? We have triggers to teach us something about ourselves. And we probably, at the time, don't even know that's what it is. Triggers are teaching moments. They really show you what's really bothering you. Triggers happen for you, not to you. They have a message or a lesson for you to learn. And I want to help you by showing you how to start looking at your triggers in order to discover the lessons that they have for you. Uh, your triggers will not go away until you learn what they're trying to teach you. And I want to show you how you can react in different ways to your own triggers so that they don't take over your life. Your decision to do that will affect all other areas of your life and you'll start to see how other situations and relationships in your life will get so much easier for you. I know that for myself because once I started to really pay attention to um, my own triggers 
and look at why certain people or things were triggering me, I also learned so much about myself. Actually, when I was able to understand why I was being triggered, my relationships and my day-to-day -day life started to change. <laughs> and I stopped reacting to my triggers in the way I used to because they didn't bother me anymore. And I'm, and I'm telling you the truth. People in general used to trigger me a lot. <laughs> in fact, they used to piss me off a lot. And I could never figure out why. Because I've learned to listen to the message of my own triggers, they don't take me down like they used to. And I know how to deal with them when a new one shows up. And when I am triggered now, and we're always going to get triggered because that's just part of being human, I can still sometimes overreact when something happens, but I know right after it happens that I've just been triggered. And now I'm actually able to say to myself, wow, that triggered me. So if someone makes me angry or I want to run away or I'm crying for some reason after what somebody said, I know something's going on and, and I look at it. I don't ignore it. I don't numb out. I look at it. There's a lesson in there. I don't run for my food, which is my coping mechanism that I've used to numb out for all my life. I can deal with it now. And yes, it's still going to be painful and it may be something that you have to look at and but it's something that's trying to teach you something. But I do it now because I know I have to in order to keep my head on straight, literally. I no longer allow my triggers to create these huge stories in my head that just aren't true. I work through them though, to find out what it is I need to learn. I know I don't have to overreact to them in the way that I used to. And I can help you get to a place where your triggers won't affect you as much as they do now, because you'll know how to deal with them when they come up. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about why you get triggered so easily and what is really going on when you get triggered. It's an interesting one that just might blow you away. Uh, once you start to see how your triggers are teaching moments that can tell you a lot about yourself, you'll begin to see some real changes in your life, I promise. If you have any other questions about triggers or any other challenges that you may be facing right now, the link for my website is below where you can ask me a question under Ask Carol. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Instagram. Until next time, remember to have compassion for yourself for what you are working through and stay safe. Bye for now.